Hi there, my extraordinary friends. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Heart of the Wild. My name is Chelsea. We are here with Bailey and Jonathan. This past week, we asked you what you wanted to know about being a zookeeper. So today, we're going to answer your questions. What's the weirdest question someone has asked you? All right, you and me, uh... Do you cook the meat for the tiger? <laughs> There's this one woman that asked us, uh, she was like, what kind of meat do the giraffes eat? Or are you going to go feed the giraffes next with the meat? I think my favorite is people probably asking if the tigers eat the chickens. The answer is no. They do not. They eat meat because they're carnivores. How do you keep the animals entertained slash healthy? We do enrichment, which is something that's really important for all of our animals in captivity. It keeps them from being bored. So it can be something as simple as hiding treats, uh, putting things in boxes, giving them boxes, toys. Boomer balls? Boomer balls. <laughs> and with the babies, we like to take them on walks and runs around the park. Mm -hmm. That's fun, sometimes. Do you get attached to the animals you work with? Is that a question? Uh, yes, there are our kids. They <laughs> are, I mean, we raise them, so we love them. We get them tattooed on us. Yes. Uh, Show that tattoo. I mean, they're our life, so yes. <laughs> we do get attached. How do you manage a busy schedule? We don't. <laughs> Uh, being a zookeeper means that you work all the time. That's probably one of the biggest misconceptions is everyone thinks we actually get holidays and weekends off. That is not true. Animals still need to eat on Christmas Day. Uh, so we work a lot. That's right. That's but right. when you love what you do, is it really work? No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> what is the funniest, favorite, and happiest memory of a coworker? Oh, well, there's so many, but I'd uh, have to say... Is. When I accidentally slapped Maddie in the back with a slab of ribs <laughs> that was meant for the tigers. How'd that happen? I was throwing it over the fence and I missed. And it... <laughs> uh, there are a lot. But I think my most recent, or the one that came to my mind first, was probably you. That time you uh, dropped your hat in an ant <laughs> <laughs> And then proceeded to put it back on your head and then freaked out and there was jugs of water being poured <coughs> and lots of screaming. Oh yeah. yeah that Fire was, ants by the way, not just any ants. That was crazy. Uh, one of my funniest ones was a Bailey. She was, uh, I don't know if you can tell this, but you were in the feed room <laughs> doing your famous handstands <laughs> and you, <laughs> you somehow the light falls down. So. Do you force slash drug the animals in order to do encounters? Is that really it a was, question? It was actually a question, yeah. Uh, the answer is no, we would never. Uh, if the as animal much, doesn't want to do it, you're out of luck, buddy. You're not going to see that animal today. Right. Another big misconception is people think we do encounters and stuff just for the money. And while it does cost money to do it, the money that we earn from encounters and such goes back into caring for these animals. It goes for food, health care, maintaining the zoo. So it's actually really important that you guys do encounters. Nothing is forced. Um, if an animal doesn't seem like they're going to want to do it, then we don't. They're limited on the amount they can do per day. We would never drug our animals. Do you have a favorite animal? Who or what? Our, my favorite has to be Trace and Penelope, our special cats. I they think all amazing. three of us have the same answer. Yeah. We all love lions. Trace and Penelope are definitely up there in the top. I'm going to add in Grace, too. Yes. Our serval. And, and Kevin. And Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Kevin's pretty cool. He's a caracal. <laughs> Trace and Timba, my boy. That's right. Hashtag blind mom. <laughs> what do you feed the animals? Depends on the animal. So like a lot of our herbivores get uh, fruits, vegetables, some lettuce and things like that, leafy greens. Carnivores, they get meat. Yes, it is raw. We do not cook the meat because they would not eat cooked guys, meat in the wild. Paula Dean's not out in the Serengeti cooking up steaks for these lions. Okay? However, with the heat some days, it probably could cook in the sun. Yeah. But no, we don't actually cook our meats. And they get a variety of uh, pork, beef, and chicken. Kind of whatever right. we got, they get a variety. That's right. And we do not feed live animals. Nope. They're already dead. What are the best and worst parts of the job? The best parts of the job for me are seeing something that you've raised from a few days old and you just have them their whole life and have that bond with them. But the worst part would probably be when something passes away. Because yeah. as much as we don't want to talk about it, it happens. It happens at every park. Everyone thinks our job is sunshine and rainbows all the time, and it's not. It can be really stressful. Uh, it takes a particular person to be able to do this job. And uh, 
sometimes you're having a really bad day and then there's just even a 30 second moment of just that bond you have with an animal that you raise or you get to see see them do something that's pretty cool or be yes. funny or goofy so it's just a little moments and then too we do a lot of education here so like getting to see kids get excited about something that you love uh, it's, it's kind of cool. How do you become a zookeeper? Lots of poop and scratches and mm -hmm. long days and yeah. not yep. having fun with friends. That's right, that's right. And getting in arguments with your family. Uh -huh. right. um, and it depends on what zoo you're looking at as to how to become a zookeeper. Our particular zoo, you don't need a degree to work here, but um, definitely helps you go further, faster if you've had some experience with animals. Mm -hmm. But everybody starts at the bottom of the totem pole. I think every one of us has started doing something kind yep. of crappy. Yep. Now there are zoos you do need a degree. There's different requirements, but it all depends on the zoo. Just mm -hmm. gotta look into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. How I became, uh, I started volunteering, and I volunteered for about two months, and then they hired me on. We hired him because he's good at lifting buckets. But it was. Uh, he's our muscle man. <laughs> it was, you know, but I mean, I came here volunteer. I would do this for free. I mean, <laughs> it is, it is amazing with these animals. But then, you know, I just got hired on, which is amazing. I yeah. was so lucky, so fortunate. I worked uh, in some wildlife rehab, did some internships, and I actually had to apply here three times until I got a job interview, and then I was hired. What about you? I started as a volunteer. A volunteer power. And now look at me. That's right. Head zookeeper. Yeah. <laughs> what have been your best slash worst experiences with zoo guests? Well, we'll start with the good. <laughs> yeah. Best is probably those moments where you get to, you know, share things with kids that get really excited or seeing somebody that's really fascinated with something that you're fascinated about and getting to educate them and see that they learn something and have them pass that on to somebody else. Uh, worst would uh, probably be the people that try to hop fences, yep, throw rocks at our animals, yeah, try to them. shut us down for no reason. We have certain guests that treat our animals the way that we treat them. We have one lady named Kim who does not step foot on this property without presents for half of the animals here. <laughs> she spoils them just as much as we do. And just seeing how much our animals impact other people's lives is the best. And like you said, throwing rocks at the animals. Yeah. Not gonna find yeah. you. Have you ever gotten hurt on the job? I have. Uh, I was running one time <laughs> and fell <laughs> and bruised my hips so bad. But no, we get little scratches here and there. Yeah. Bird cages. The bird yeah. cages. I mean, a lot of us. Oh, that might be bad tan. <laughs> well, if you breathe on yeah. her, she bruises, so yeah. that doesn't count. A lot of us people come and see us, and then they're like, "Oh my gosh, you must have gotten attacked by an animal." No, these are actually from doorways. Or gates. like, if you don't trim the bird's nails and you hold them. Yeah. 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 And fire ants. A lot, fire ants. A lot of fire ants. <laughs> Tragedy. <laughs> I think I don't think there's a single person here that hasn't been attacked by fire ants yet. That's right. No. <laughs> we don't put ourselves in a position where an animal could seriously hurt us. Our and safety is as important as our animal safety. Because if we're not here, then who's going to take care of them? Do you get to play with animals all day? <laughs> I'll be honest, we really love all the support you guys give us. But sometimes, I don't, I don't know if you realize what goes into this job, but it's a lot. Yes, we do get to play with animals sometimes. It is not all day. Uh, what you guys see online and like the videos we personally share on Snapchats, it looks like it's all fun and dandy all day. We just show you the good stuff. Uh, nobody wants to watch us pick up poop. The good stuff meaning when we run in the back to hurry up and feed everybody their lunch <laughs> yeah. while we're trying to eat our lunch at the same time and just happen to sit down and get a hug from our tiger cub. Do you have advice for anyone entering this field of work? <laughs> Some people join the animal field because, you know, you get away from people, you know, because you're your only animal lovers, you don't want to deal with people all day, but you have to deal with people every single day. So if you if you don't like people, you're still going to have to deal with them. Yeah, that's a good point to bring yeah. up. Uh, just because you love animals doesn't mean the zoo life is cut out for you. And I'm not trying to say that to be mean. It's true. Um, it really does take a unique person to be able to survive the zoo life. Um, you have to be strong and clear-headed and yes. lift, not a, lift a decent amount of weight, be yeah. on your feet all day in all sorts of weather. We're not just here when it's sunny, we're here when it's snowy. blazing hot, snowy, rain, hail, Christmas tornadoes, day. hurricanes, holidays, you name it, we're here. Um, so if you can't handle that, Maybe it's not for you. <laughs> Do the tigers sleep because they are bored? 
So, so the big cats usually sleep, what about, was it 20 hours Up a day? Up to 20 hours, 20 hours a, day. a day. So when you come to a zoo and you see any cat, they're not bored. They're just doing what they do best, which uh, is sleep. Another thing, when you see a cat pacing here, yeah. <laughs> yes. look behind you because I guarantee one of us are standing there. They don't just pace because, I don't know what some of y'all think, but they yeah. pace when they see somebody they know or somebody that they want. Do you ever get scared of an animal? This is honestly one of the most asked questions. And in fact, this one got asked at least three times uh, for this video. No. Do we have a healthy respect for the animals we work with? Absolutely. Uh, we're not just going to go willy-nilly into any cage or walk in with some baboons and tigers and stuff that we haven't raised or haven't worked with. Um, we value our lives as much as theirs, so we're not going to be silly about it. We work with these animals every single day. We have protocols and things that we follow. So We've spent years reading them, and we know yep. when they don't want to be involved with us and when they do. Yep. You learn how to read animals just like you would your own pets. You can see their good days, bad days, if they're feeling frisky, if they're feeling lazy. Uh, so you get pretty good at just knowing what you're working with every day. Yep. What is a typical day like? There is no <sighs> typical day. No day is the same as mm. any other day. That's right. No. Uh, yeah. New babies, yeah. new splinters, yeah. new... Yeah. <laughs> things change pretty quickly around here. And that's kind of one of my favorite things about this job is it keeps you on your toes. It doesn't get boring. That's You're not right. sitting down at a desk all day. That's right. Every day is different. Except for, Except for right now. Right now. <laughs> but this doesn't count. This is for you guys. That's for you. <laughs> Do you animals come from or are they ever released into the wild? No, no, they do not come from the wild, and no, they will never be released back into the wild. These animals are captive born and bred, um, and they would not make it. It would actually be more torture for them to be released into the wild than it would be for them to stay here. Yes, they do have animal instincts, and they pick up on things that they would in the wild, but they wouldn't know how to hunt for themselves. They wouldn't know how to, you know, find the proper habitat to survive. They're like, Mom! When Where's we, my chicken? <laughs> when we give them chickens that still have feathers on them, they don't know what to do with it. In fact, a lot of people, it's a big controversy as to whether zoos are important or not. I think they are. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. Um, but when you guys come here and you see these animals, these are animals you won't get to see on a regular basis when you're just walking around your neighborhood. So it's kind of cool to have animals that you can meet up close and personal and give you a reason to want to care about the world. Mm -hmm. We got some work to do, guys. I hate to tell you, whatever you think is going on in this world, it, it needs some work by all of us. Um, so maybe these guys will give you a reason. I'm hoping, maybe one day. That's a good one. Where do you animals come from? Uh, Not the wild. No, a lot of our animals are rescues. We rescue a lot of our animals. We're donated. Yeah, donated mm -hmm. animals. Uh, orphans. We get yeah. orphans from other zoos that don't have the staff that knows how to bottle feed something so young. Is being a zookeeper a dream job? For me, yes. Um, but like we said before, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. <laughs> There's a lot that goes into it. We have good days and bad days, just like everybody else. Um, but for me, being a zookeeper was always something I wanted to do. So getting to do that is pretty awesome. I was raised on a farm my whole life. So I mean, I've, I've loved animals and I've always loved the big cats. So getting to raise like lions and stuff is just, unbelievable i mean it's amazing to think back right now it's it's like really i got this job it's, it's <laughs> definitely amazing. a dream job but you have to be prepared to cry just as much as you laugh what is your favorite slash least favorite traits of working with your co-workers i got a good answer for this one Ooh. i don't know um it actually is both uh the worst and best is that being in a private owned zoo we have a small staff Bad news is we are together all the time. So just like any other siblings, we see really, really, we're a family here, yeah. um, all yeah. of us. So being on top of each other all the time, 365, day and night. Sometimes we kind of butt heads. Uh, like every day. Yeah. But not in, all day. But in the end, we know we love each other. So like it's really not big of a, that big of a deal. Uh, we get over it. <laughs> so we'll yell at each other in the morning and then at lunchtime yeah. we'll ask them what they want to eat. But those yeah. are also the best traits is because... We really are family here. We eat, sleep, breathe the zoo, and we cry, sweat, bleed. Anything you can think of, we do together. Yeah, we practically see the, the best same and time. the worst yeah. of everybody. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It, it's a cool bond that we have. Yeah. Like, even if we don't stay here for life, I think we're all going to be friends and family for the rest of our lives. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the subscribe button for more videos to come.